Welcome to Behind the Curtain, Nashville's Mover, Shaker, and Taste Maker. Brought to you by Cord Real Estate, your key to the heart of Nashville. I'm Steve Luther alongside my co host, Van Hoy. Here we peel back the layers of Nashville's vibrant scene, sitting down with the innovators, creators, and leaders who shape our city. From music to business and everything in between, we dive into the journeys that have brought them to where they are today. We're here to uncover the stories behind the success, the passion driving their pursuits, and why they've chosen Nashville as their stage. It's about the people who dream big, push boundaries, and make this city truly unique. So join us as we explore the heart and soul of Nashville through the eyes of those who know it best. Well, our guest today is Stuart Lackey, a distinguished leader in healthcare and technology. Uh, As the founder of Sound Health Advisory and a strategic advisor at Southern Orthopedics, orthodontic partners. Uh, Stuart has a rich history in leading startups that dramatically changed the standard of healthcare through innovation and strategic growth. His extensive experience encompasses sales leadership, surgical device commercialization, and performance management across various healthcare settings. Stuart's commitment to excellence has propelled numerous organizations towards achieving remarkable growth and operational efficiency. Stuart, welcome to the show. Thank you. Sounds so official. I know. I know. <laughs> so formal. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, um, let's just kind of jump in. So talk to me about uh, kind of the journey that led you to uh, found Sound Health Advisory and, um, you know, what's what's the the core mission of that organization? Sure. You know, I'm going to back up briefly. We were just talking before we started recording about what brought us to Nashville. And so the radio business brought me to Nashville 24 years ago. Okay. Uh, Worked for uh, a group of radio stations here on the sales and business side. And shortly after 9-11, I left radio and got into healthcare. And so through a series of companies and startups uh, over the last 20 years or so, um, enjoyed an amazing ride, an amazing career. Um, and then about two years ago, wanted to take that knowledge um, and and the cumulative effects of working with just some tremendous people, tremendous leaders, and, and starting to try to help other organizations scale revenues of different sizes, uh, healthcare organizations. So, uh, founded Health Sound Health Advisory to do that, and it's uh, it's been a pretty interesting ride so far. <laughs> well, what what were you doing in radio? Were you like uh, an announcer? Or were you what, what what did you do in radio? So I grew up as a radio rat, Steve. Uh, my family. Uh, owned and operated radio stations and television stations in Western Kentucky. And so I grew up, uh, I knew early on, I watched my dad get up every morning. He owned the radio station, but he also did sign on. So he was up at 4.30 every morning. And I watched that and I knew if nothing else, I had to get up early in life. Like you got to get up early, right? And then the rest, you know, you have to figure out. But um, so I was kind of a radio rat following him around and, and learning that business and kind of fell in love with it. Um, and when I got out of school, out of undergrad, I went up to Cincinnati for a couple of years and, and got in the sales game and, and continued to do a little bit of voiceover work. But yeah, it was mostly on the business side for me. Now, did, did that drive the naming of, of your company at all? So actually, it did not. That's a, that's a pretty interesting question. Uh, <laughs> no, I, so Sound Health, I mean, there's a lot of things that are broken in our economy. I think you and I had some, yeah. some conversations about that before <laughs> we went on there as well. But healthcare has got some major challenges and Nashville being essentially the healthcare services capital of America, there's over 700 healthcare companies and related agencies based here in in middle Tennessee. Um, And there's, there's a lot of amazing innovation that's come out of Nashville, some awesome startups. Healthcare as a whole has got some challenges in front of it. So sound health is more of a a knock to, you know, making healthcare sound. Right. In, In some fashion. So. So what, what's kind of the core mission? What, what do you guys? So essentially, we help companies of all sizes get up to speed from a revenue standpoint. If they need to kind of tweak their revenue model, if they need to hire salespeople, if they need to train salespeople, what what do they need from that standpoint? Again, the cumulative experience of, of building sales channels for healthcare startups, mostly on the device side, um, but also on the SaaS and the service side, is where we can come in and, and really help shore up some things for companies. And so it can look a little bit different. It can be a limited engagement. It can be a more full-time engagement, which I had the opportunity to work with Southern Orthodontic Partners all of last year to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, 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 it can look, it can look a lot of different ways, but that's really the core. It's something I've always enjoyed doing is putting together a plan, building teams, building culture, and then realizing, you know, a, a plan, if you will, a dream. Now, I'm sure you've got, uh, you know, some consistent strategies 
uh, across these businesses? What have been some of the, the key strategies that you, you implement? I think it's true, like in every business, Steve, it, it comes down to the people that are, that are quote unquote on the bus. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was told and taught very early that you have to hire the right people. And in healthcare, in, in healthcare device sales, it's a highly competitive industry. Mm -hmm. It is highly technical. And here's another thing. I had no technical or healthcare training. I was a political science history major, major in undergrad, but I had an intellectual curiosity to go out and learn. And I had some amazing mentors early on when I was just a sales rep for a pharmaceutical company way back when. And then my first device job that kind of modeled the way for me to say, hey, there are some best practices here. And if you reproduce best practices long enough, you're going to create a repeatable pattern that the marketplace will reward you for. And I got hooked on that. And so when I started building my own teams, um, I started parlaying and modeling the way, learned a, hard, a lot of hard lessons along the way, but essentially it comes down to hiring the right people and then giving them the tools to go out and be successful. Mm -hmm. So I would say that translates, that translates any type of business, any sales environment, be it real estate, be it healthcare. <laughs> uh, there are some universal truths, right? Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Yep. St staffing is, is, is tough. Yeah. <laughs> and it is in, in this day and time, yeah. um, for sure. Um, yeah, it, it's, you know, you, we use a lot of resources to find, you know, like recruiters, you know, and so those, those could be amazing resources to help you locate the right people. And then you've got to create the culture, right? I mean, we used to say, and I think it's still true. People don't quit jobs. They quit leaders, right? They, they quit people. And if you hire correctly and you align incentives, and in our case, create an amazing comp plan. And for some people, it's money. Some people, it's promotion. In a startup environment, there's equity opportunity. So it's really finding out what drives people for motivation, uh, helping them get clarity on that, and then yeah. kind of unleashing them. You know, once they're trained and they're ready to go. And so, yeah, that's that's always been a that's always been exciting to me. Now, healthcare, I'm sure there's there's a lot of hoops to jump through when you're, uh, you know, commercializing, uh, uh, you know, surgical devices introducing new tech to to healthcare what, what are some of the challenges you, you deal with how much time do we have <laughs> so it is it's very challenging you've got to go through r d you've got to go through regulatory you've got to make sure you've got a, a, a mvp a, a minimally viable product something that's all that is safe and also efficacious in healthcare and in today's environment it can not only it can't just be equivalent it's got to be superior. So if you're bringing a new technology into a hospital or any type of setting like that, they want to know how great is it clinically? Is it much better than what we're using? And then how much revenue is it going to generate or save us as a hospital? And back in the day, to give you kind of a comparison, you could have an FDA approval letter. Think about this. And so FDA approval letter, go into a hospital, talk to the surgeon, and then as long as you had a letter, the hospital would let you bring the product in that day if the surgeon had a surgery that day and he wanted to use it to trial it. Like it, it used to be that quick to get an eval. Now there's a massive approval process that can take weeks, if not months, if not years, uh, to get products and services into hospitals. And there's more rigor around it. And there probably should be, but it's 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 nuts. Yeah. 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 I, that seems a little scary. Just <laughs> I just bring something in that quick, but yeah, they um, used to let they used to let industry scrub in the cases. So you imagine your surgeons doing an operation, and there's someone that's that's very well trained, knows the product sure. that they're yeah. using, so they're there to provide value and can provide value. We're they're highly trained in that sense, but they used to let lay people from the device company scrub in <laughs> to the surgery uh, until that went awry a few times, and of course that yeah. that, that got ignited. So <laughs> that was years ago, before my time. So. So, so tell me a little bit about your role with uh, with Southern Orthodontic. You're you're doing um, strategic advisement for B two B sales and marketing. What what all is involved? With sure. So Southern Orthodontics is a company that's based here in Nashville, but is mm -hmm. uh, predominantly funded and supported by Shore Capital, which is a private equity firm based out of Chicago. They also have a Nashville office here, and so okay. so they have a number of companies in their portfolio. Uh, in their healthcare portfolio and Southern Orthodontics is one of them. So uh, what I did for them is basically create an uh, entire sales playbook, a B2B sales playbook. And um, I didn't know anything about orthodontics, but you know, again, those skills are, are transferable. And uh, yeah, again, working in a model um, that allowed for me to take those experiences and, you know, hire a sales team and kind of build, 
build templates and, you know, playbooks and, you know, messaging when you get in front of a customer, what's that look like? Uh, and then reproducing it. Right. And again, it comes back to people. So I think, you know, we were able to do some really great things together. Yeah. Yeah. Now is, is that primarily, uh, what you do with, with sound healthcare or do you get more involved with? So yeah, just to clarify. So sound health advisory is my company and then other, I advise for other companies. So some right. orthodontics, there's other companies that I work with, you know, d- depending on the engagement. So S S O P is short for Southern orthodontics. That's one company that I've worked with, but there are others. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. So yeah, th- it's, it's, it allows me to work with a diverse, diversified group of companies uh, and then really kind of customize what they need. And, and there's some that I just work with on, you know, two or three, you know, visit engagement and it's mm-hmm. very specific and very honed and they just want feedback on one specific thing. So gotcha. it really just depends uh, on, on what the need is. So. Well, yeah. what, what kind of trends have you, uh, have you seen what, what's coming down the road in, in healthcare that, uh, you know, oh, that, that, <laughs> well, it's like everything else, you know, it's, it's AI yeah, everywhere. And so I've, I've consulted with, you know, um, a, a number of AI companies. They just, they're looking for help to, to hire and find salespeople and kind of what, what makes sense. And the challenge is, is that there are some great people out there, but AI is kind of a new deal. And so you're seeing applications, everything from when a patient comes into uh, their first visit with a primary care physician. There's ambient technology like um, like um, Alexa, if you will, right. but with high sensory, high acuity to be able to pick up everything just as you and I are talking here. So in the world of electronic medical records, many times if the doctor doesn't have an assistant and they don't have a, a, a similar type of dictation technology, they have to look down and take notes while they're talking to you. I don't know if you've ever experienced that or someone in the room is, sure. is typing right? What some of these technologies allow the the physicians to do in that setting is to be completely engaged, never to break eye contact, be present. Mm -hmm. And, and while this ambient recording is going on, will take specific notes and is getting to the point where it can be prescriptive from a diagnosis standpoint. They're not there yet legally from regulatory, but clinical decision support, all of that is happening. And it's pretty amazing, mm-hmm. um, but it's it's happening in the OR suite. Um, there was an article I read from Becker's this morning. It's a healthcare journal, uh, trade journal, and that the, there was a cohort of nurses out at Kaiser Permanente, which is a healthcare system on the West Coast. Think about HCA. It's about it's you know HCA of the sure. West, if you will. Um, but the nurses had pooled and were protesting that AI was never going to take the place of nursing care, but human beings have to make that decision. So right. you're going to see continued disruption as that technology gets just, you know, drilled or uh, tightened uh, and gets better over time. You're going to see, you're going to see that kind of, that kind of thing. And it'll be interesting to see how integrated it gets. I suspect it's going to be a, a standard of care. Yeah, I, I would think I, we just had uh, some exposure to it. Um, my, uh, my wife's uh, mom uh, had some kind of a scan done and one of one of the doctors that we know is like, you really need to have that redone with an AI overlay. Yeah. I'm like, what is that? I'm yeah. Like, well, AI reviews it and it picks up more stuff than you know people yeah. see with the naked eye. Yeah. Which it's kind of crazy that we've come so far in in so short amount of time. Yeah, you know? I've got a, a a colleague, if you will, uh, who's an interventional radiologist, and that it's the same thing. It's those AI can can act in concert with the surgeon yeah, and just, it's a one, two punch. I, it's going to be a while before I think it will receive the blessing of right. regulatory to say, okay, this is the definitive diagnosis it, as in your case. Um, but it's going to happen. Um, and again, the speed and the, what that will afford surgeons and healthcare in terms of, um, you know, just the speed of diagnosis, the accuracy of it, you know, is going to be amazing. And it's going to displace a lot of jobs, but I think it will allow for new jobs to be created. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So you've talked a lot about people. Uh, talk to me about uh, leadership and coaching. Um, you know, I think those are some aspects of, of your career as well. Yeah. Um, you know, how, how have you used mentorship uh, to help transform organizations? Mentorship in terms of 
mentors that I've encountered or now mentoring or taking that in, in mentoring, taking that and mentoring yeah. other people. I, again, I've been blessed to work with some fantastic leaders, um, uh, in, in healthcare. And, um, I think the, the reproducible thing that has translated for me, there's a number of those things, but it, I think it again comes down to, um, having the right people in place, but then getting specific with clarity of purpose, because you can go out and you can call on lots of people every day. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing, right? But then there's things that come in relative to targeting and who are we calling on? And once we're in front of them, what are we saying? And shortening the sales cycle. And there are, there are universal truths in that, and especially in healthcare, um, you know your stuff, technically you're sound, um, you have rehearsed and role played and drilled and you have your messages tight. You know what questions to ask. You can handle objections and then you influence and convince. I mean, there is a prescriptive path as we train people in healthcare on how to move the sales process forward, mm -hmm. uh, relative to the mechanics of that. But people relative to leadership, people follow people that know where they're going. And again, I'll go back to, if you don't know why, first of all, people don't work for you. They have their own reasons. And right. as a leader, if you don't know why people are working for you, I mean, it's not a direct interview. Why are you working? For you? Right. But over time, if you don't, if you're not invested in what their goals are and you don't know that number one, you're missing a huge opportunity. Number two, you're probably not going to have that person with you for very long. Right. And, and so I think it's investing in people and, and giving them a pathway and steering them where they want to go. And then, you know, you model the way, uh, you know, relative to your own business. It helps if you've been successful in your own business, right? Mm -hmm. And then you've, you know, you're stepping back, you're modeling the way you're coaching. There's a lot of leadership trainings that, um, that, that are out there. And most people, this is hard to admit for, I think for most of us is that we're very competent in a lot of areas, but we all have areas that we need development. Oh, sure. Right. And you, like, you may be great at this. But there's other things that, okay, there's some opportunities here. And it's just because of maybe a lack of experience. And so as a leader, knowing that the same person that could be a rock star closer, maybe is awful at organization and targeting. And it's like, okay, we do this really well, but maybe they need more support and direction over here. And, right. and so it's just fine tuning that no one, none of us has arrived. And it's just really dialing in on people's development. I think if you build people, people will build a business. Mm -hmm. That's not mine. I borrowed that from someone. So, yeah. <laughs> to, to that extent, do, yeah. do you do you still have your own mentors and coaches that you use? Man, I was thinking about that coming over today. The person I, I was in direct sales in college. I got into a direct sales organization, and this is going to date me a little bit. Um, but the old guys, <laughs> like, and this, I was on the back end. Like everybody knows who Tony Robbins is. Oh, well, sure. well yeah. Tony has meant there's a whole cadre of people that that Tony. Yeah, was mentored yeah. by none, none more that he, he still credits Jim Rohn, R O H N yeah. not yeah. Jim Rohn, the sportscaster, Jim Rohn, um, to this day probably was the biggest impact in my career by, by CD, by seminar, mm -hmm. um, to, to paint some very basic principles of business and life and things that are, that are still true today. And I point people, Jim's stuff is still available. Now most of it's yeah. free on YouTube. You know, do you know I'm referencing I, Jim Rohn? We actually, we, I just pulled up uh, a bunch of, of Jim Rohn quotes the other day. Uh, I'll butcher it, but there was, there was one that I, I brought up uh, to our team. Uh, it was uh, the, the problem with putting things off until tomorrow is when it comes, it's called today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And my favorite of his is uh, the greatest value in life is not what you get. The greatest value in life is what you become. Yeah. And I will all, I will take that with me forever. And it's true. It's like, okay, okay. all the stuff that we get caught up, it's like, what am I becoming in the process of doing whatever I've selected to do with my life? Yeah. You know, and some people say, it's, don't just, he would say, just don't get through the day, get from the day, like get something like, what are you doing? What are you accomplishing? What's yeah. your goal? And no all zero his, days. <laughs> what's that? No zero days. No zero days. Yeah. And so those are things. My dad was a great, was a great inspiration. Again, just his work ethic, the way that he treated people. Um, and he was a staple of a small community that we grew up in. And, and so I got to watch him 
my whole life do, you know, do some pretty great things in a small town. And so that was a huge influence on me, but, um, man, there's some, there's some great mentors in, in a sea of, of Instagram and, you know, <laughs> yeah. social media and, you know, instant gratification, it seems to, you know, accelerate every day. Um, yeah, there's some great, great mentors that are still available out there. Mm -hmm. Now you talked about Nashville being a, a great market for, for startups. Um, What's some advice you'd give to uh, to to new healthcare startups uh, here here in the area? Start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, there are great resources. The Entrepreneur Center is has been a staple here for I guess twenty years almost. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people that have come through there that have incubated their companies with great resources. People that are mentors in the community. Um, there's a lot of VC money that's if it's not based here, it's connected to Nashville. There's mm -hmm. some. There's some new opportunities coming very soon to Nashville from, from that standpoint. So I, I tell people all the time, and this has been true since I got here 24 years ago. Um, if you have a great idea and you've done your homework, I don't care if it's a business or a charity, there are people in this town now more than ever that will help you realize that dream. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that because I've experienced it myself and I've had the yeah. opportunity to work with people and, and help help them realize, you know, their dream and get them started. There are great resources. You just have to get out. You have to get out and meet people, get out of your comfort zone, go talk to people, you know, ask questions. Yep. And, and, you know, again, there's some disruptive things coming that I think make entrepreneurship um, a challenge because, you know, there's a lot of processes that some of these new technologies like AI are going to solve and they're going to, they're going to take, things out of the equation, but I think they will provide new opportunities for, for young entrepreneurs and leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, we are starving, I think, you know, for great leadership. We, I think there's always an opportunity for great leaders to rise up that are value focused. So, Absolutely. Yeah. It's been a, a recurring theme um, with, with a lot of our guests just talking about uh, how collaborative and of an environment Nashville yeah. is, um, you know, probably birth from, from the music industry in, yeah. you know, in some respects, but um, you know, it, it, it's really interesting. It, I've, I've you know, lived in several places, uh, around the country and, and, uh, you know, this environment is different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's an authentic, there's a lot of show showmanship in this town and that's just, yeah. that's the nature of the, of the business and the beast, but there's an authenticity too. If you dig down a few layers, there's, there's an authenticity. Um, you asked me a question. I was, uh, relative to leadership and just, I, I think coming back to authenticity, I think having a lot of humility. Mm -hmm. um, and, and empathy of meeting people where they are. Cause everybody's struggling with something Oh yeah, and it's like, okay, everybody's human, you know, and I've been humbled more than once in my career. Um, but, um, I think that's important for us all to remember as well. So what are your, uh, what are your long-term goals for, for sound health advisory? I, I just want to continue to grow it. Uh, we're looking for new clients all the time. Uh, if somebody's looking for help to scale the organization from a sales standpoint and doesn't, don't know really where to go next, uh, you know, we have a variety of things that we can help with. So, um, yeah. And then I'm, you know, I'm active and, and love to invest in startups as well. Um, if there's, you know, if it's a good idea, um, fortunate <laughs> enough that, that I've been, you know, had the opportunity to invest in a lot of early stage stuff here in Nashville over the last, you know, several years. So, uh, that's also a hobby of mine. Uh, we, we kind of talked about, you know, economics and finance a little bit in terms of new technologies as well before we got on the air. Um, so yeah, I have, I have a lot of interest in helping other people kind of realize their, their businesses and their dreams as well. So yeah. now what's some of the, the fun stuff you've gotten to work on over the years? Um, Assuming you can disclose with, with the NDA well, sure. or whatever. But. So no, for sure. So um, one of the first, so we live in 12 South and um, one of my child, two of my childhood friends, best friends started a vintage denim, denim company, I'm a Gina Willie uh, from Henderson. And we helped, you know, we were a small part of, of, of that business when it started, um, you know, restaurants, uh, other healthcare companies. So uh, some that have, that have, that have done well, some that are still trying the, the little engine that could. So, uh, but yeah, you know, just small, small pieces here and there. Yeah. You know? So not just healthcare, you're, you're investing in, in other things as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. If, yeah, again, if it's made and I have intellectual curiosity about stuff and it's like, okay, you know, it's, is it something that I would be interested in learning more about and yeah. wanting, you know, wanting to, if, if asked, you know, provide any feedback to, to the leadership team and, you know, you want to do stuff that would, you know, potentially open other doors of discovery and, mm -hmm. you know, value creation and those kind of things. So, yeah. and, th and that's honestly, that's what people, that's what, that's what most founders 
are looking for they're looking for investment dollars to you know keep the lights on and so forth. But they 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 want expertise too, and so right. I don't have a lot of it, but you know to the extent I can provide it, I, I certainly would like to. So, sure, yeah, sure. yeah. Well, and I think you know business is business is business, right? Yeah. Across all industries, there's yeah. there's commonalities. You know, yeah. Um, sure. I, I think a lot of a lot of small business owners when they get into it, it's yeah. It's so focused around the the trade or you know the the service that you know that they're performing, yeah. Um, that you know they they forget all about the uh, all the business stuff that goes along with it. But uh, but yeah, I, I think when, once you kind of figure that out, you can uh, you you can work in any industry. It's it's all you know very similar and yeah, what you're doing. A lot of, a lot of overlap. Yeah, for sure. Any any plans to expand outside of Nashville, or you you? Uh... Well, I, there's companies we work with that aren't based here, for sure. Okay. So the great thing about Nashville, it's centrally located. You can get to anywhere pretty quickly if yeah. you need to. Yeah. But you know, we we're in a period. My wife and I, who's an amazing lady, mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, we have we have a six year old, and it is interesting how life kind of evolves. That uh, you know you you reprioritize things constantly. And sure. so we, we have found being parents, um, an amazing journey and my, you know, everything that we do is in, is really with the design to try to spend more time with her, uh, with our daughter as much as we can. So, um, you know, Nashville has been great to us and hopefully we can always call it home. Um, yeah, awesome. I'll leave it there. Yeah. Well, if, if someone wants to, uh, to get a hold of you, uh, either for, uh, sound health advisory purposes or, or to invest in a business. <laughs> What's yeah. the best way to get hold of you? Um, you can, you can hit me at Twitter. Stuart Lackey one, uh, is my username on Twitter, soundhealthadvisory.com. Uh, I think that's an active, uh, website. Most of my stuff is, you know, just directly through email and through Twitter. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, that's a great place to ping me and message me as well. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Yeah, man. Well, Stuart, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much, Steve. Thanks. Yeah. Well, that's a wrap on today's episode of Behind the Curtain, Nashville's Movers, Shakers. And taste makers. We hope you've been inspired by the stories of passion, perseverance, and innovation right here in Nashville. A big thank you to our guests for sharing their journeys and to you, our listeners, for joining us. And of course, our gratitude to Accord Real Estate for making this conversation possible. Don't forget to follow or subscribe to our podcast on your favorite did I just platform. Thank us. Yes, you did. Oh, I guess I did. Well, thank us. Okay. Like I was saying. Oh yeah. Go Don't ahead. forget to follow or subscribe on your favorite platform to catch every episode and hit that notification bell. We've got plenty more fascinating guests lined up, ready to share their insights and inspirations. And we love hearing from you. So reach out to us with your thoughts, questions, or suggestions for who you'd like to hear from next. Until next time. Keep chasing your dreams and making your mark in Nashville. Oh, my goodness. Remember, Am I talking to Casey it's Kasem? the people behind the scenes that make the city shine. I love it. Take care. See you behind the curtain.